I just want to point out right now that there are two main laws of thermodynamics that we are going to pay attention to. Some people say that there's three, but I'm going to pretend that the third one is so simple that you understand it all perfectly and I don't even have to talk about it. Um, and it's not that important for us right now. First law of thermodynamics is one that you already know. I've already written it. Delta E total equals Q plus W if you have only internal energies changing, then delta U is Q plus W. Thermodynamics is about internal energy changes primarily. So here's one that you've seen the whole quarter. The internal energy can only change if you've added or taken energy out. Added energy in or taken it out. The second law of thermodynamics is, is probably, at least the way you state it, is one, of the, is one of the stranger laws that you will find because it, strictly speaking, it, it's not an equation. It's not an equality. It's an inequality. The change in the entropy is greater than or equal to the heat added divided by the temperature. So. We will talk more about that next week. But it's an inequality, so it's a strange thing all by itself. At least I think of it as a strange thing, because physics tends to be a, have a lot of equations. This equals this, this equals this. And here's one that's not an equation at all. So I I didn't mention this, but I should have. Um, wow, I can't even tell what that's supposed to say. Um, let's call this P initial and V initial at this point. There's an arrow here and a line that's drawn and an arrow there, P final, P V final. Here's a graph of P versus V, pressure versus volume. You see graphs like this a lot. This has a specific pressure and volume at this point. High pressure, small volume. This is a lower volume and a higher, and a, sorry, a higher volume and a lower pressure. And then there's a line drawn through it. Graphs, what did I say? Somewhere here I said it takes three variables to determine the state of a system. So you might think, how could this be how could this be the state of a system? There's only two variables fixed here. The pressure is known at this point right here because I can read it off the graph. The volume is known because I can read it off the graph. Two variables but I need one more. Every time you see a graph like this there's a kind of hidden variable that nobody explicitly or people tend not to talk about but I want to at least mention it once. Any guesses as to what's What's the same everywhere in this graph? What, what variable do you think? Louder? <laughs> Is the temperature the same everywhere in this, in this graph? If I pump the pressure up, well, I mean, those two points could be at the same temperature. <laughs> Let's do this one. Suppose I have a system at constant volume and I want to raise the pressure. So I want to go at constant volume and I want to keep the volume the same and I want to raise the pressure. If you had a gas in a container and you wanted to raise the pressure, how would you do it? Heat it up. So will the temperature change? Yeah. If you heat it up, and you raise the pressure at constant volume, the temperature will go up. The temperatures aren't the same at different points on this graph. They can't be. What was the same that, you, that, hap, that didn't? Of, uh, the inter is the internal energy the same? Entropy? Is the number of moles the same? How do you think the number of moles is the same? That's actually what's hidden here, is that the, the, the amount of gas is the same all the time. In a kind of picture like this. This is that you, 
can't say, you can't give enough, you haven't given enough information if you don't tell me how much gas there is. If you tell me how much gas there is, then those two points make sense. Those are two different states of the system. And what I forgot to point out was the work can be calculated from, from this, uh, this graph right here. And I'm not going to derive it for you, but the work is the, the negative of the pressure integrated over the volume. P integrated over volume is just the area that's shaded here, the area underneath that graph. There's a negative sign that sits out here for reasons you can, you can understand um, maybe in a second. dV is a, is a differential change in volume. It's a small change. Is volume going up if I go this way, is volume going up or down? Volume's going down. You're going to the left. You're going up and to the left, but you're going to the left. The volume is going down in that process. If the volume's going down, then the change in the volume is negative. So dV here is negative the whole way. Change in volume is negative. The pressure is always positive. There's no such thing as a negative pressure in, in this well, for all intents and purposes. Uh, dV is negative. Pressure is positive. That's negative. Energy is being added in this problem. The area underneath the curve is the amount of work, and the work is positive because the volume is going down. It's probably something you know. Do I have to do work on this to make the volume go down? I certainly do. I have to push down on it. And, and if I let go, it can do work in increasing its volume. It can do work on these things and raise them up into the air. So it, work energy can come out if the volume is getting bigger, but work energy goes in as the volume gets smaller. Okay, given that, I got several questions to ask you. I'll give you a minute apiece. One mole of a gas can be taken from an equilibrium state A to another equilibrium state B I'm going to do this slowly, so if I draw a line here, it means it was in equilibrium states all the time. Four of these possible processes are shown to the right. So this, I'm going to give you four ways of getting from A to B. I just sketch them in. True or false, the change in pressure is the same for each process. Change is P final minus P initial 